So, the good news is I just took on a new role. The bad news is that the new team is an agile team and it is so different from my previous way of working. I feel kind of lost. I wish I could just unlearn my old ways of working. Now is unlearning even a thing? Let's ask our experts. The word unlearning has become very popular and it's a helpful term because it describes our ability to learn new things as we gradually replace old ways of knowing and doing. But don't think of unlearning as erasing behavior or knowledge. It just doesn't work that way. Instead, think of it as rebuilding and restructuring with newer and better materials. In order to do that restructuring, our brain needs to create new neural pathways, and that can only happen with sustained practice over time. Here's an analogy to consider. Imagine you have a river of thought in your brain. That river of thought represents a very strong neural pathway. Now you introduce a new stream, which starts to divert some of the water away from that original river. Over time and with increased use, that stream will become the dominant path for new water while the original river will become a trickle. That original river, however, never really goes away. It's just that we're not using it anymore. Essentially, what we pay attention to grows. Unlearning can help us to change behavior, uh, let go of outdated knowledge, and adapt to the new realities around us. Let's ask Rajiv, Accenture's Chief Learning Officer, for a practical approach as to how he's coached people wanting to unlearn. Rajiv? Thanks, Dana. Unlearning is tough. And it is tough because the way we do things is often built on some prior success. And there's a significant amount of emotional investment in that way as well. I was once working with a leader who thought they used to lead team meetings really well until they got feedback from their team that that was not the case. They, the team did not feel they were empowered to speak up, speak their minds openly and share ideas freely. In fact, the team felt that this leader dominated the conversation. So this feedback really stung and made them pause and think about What's the cost of continuing this way? And with some work, they actually did manage to learn new ways of leading team meetings, which were, which were significantly better for themselves and the team. So Rajiv, what was the secret formula? How did you help this leader change their behavior when it was so deeply ingrained in who they are? So it comes down to how do you shift a habit that is deeply ingrained into something that serves you better? So in this case, we work with the habit loop and the starting point of the habit loop is the core belief and the core belief that was making him jump in and speak in all meetings was, was a belief that, that he had to have all the answers because he leads the team. So we tried on some new beliefs that serve him better. Things like none of us have the answer. In fact, all of us together may come up with answers. So that was the starting point. But then he still needed something which would curb his instinct to jump in and speak. So we needed a trigger or a cue which would remind him to not do the same. And we chose the mute button. So when he would be on calls, he would always stay on mute until he had something to say. And even when he felt the urge to say something, the act of reaching out to the mute button to unmute himself, that those two seconds gave him the pause needed for him to evaluate whether he really needed to say something or not. So that was the cue or the trigger. The new action that he took, apart from staying on mute and reevaluating, was in the event he did want to add something, he always started with questions rather than statements. And the habit loop gets closed with reward and, and, and some reinforcement that this is working and he co-opted a few of his team members to give him feedback where they would praise him the few times he would do it. He may fail, he may falter, but they would recognize that. But then over time, he started seeing the rewards in the way the team started interacting in a more free and, and open manner. Rajiv, I love that example. It illustrates so many important points relating to unlearning. For example, it illustrates the importance of having an open mind and a willingness to set aside emotions in order to grow. It illustrates the role 
that open and honest feedback plays. Also, how a small and simple cue, the mute button, can drive important behavior change. And fourth, that changing deeply ingrained behavior requires ongoing practice over time. That's one of my favorites. All of this takes courage and desire. Rajiv, where else have you seen this type of change take place? So Dana, I think this is huge from an individual leadership and leader perspective, but it's even bigger from a team and organization perspectives. Sometimes teams need to unlearn habits of the past. Sometimes organizations need to unlearn habits of the past. So it's the same habit loop, but applied in a team context or an organization context where teams may hold shared beliefs of why things need to be a certain way. Organizations may have shared beliefs, spoken or unspoken, of why things need to be a certain way. So this idea of unlearning applies at all levels and really is the path to us continuing to grow and, and develop um, in what we want to achieve. So it is not that I need to forget the way my old team worked. I need to keep learning the agile approach of my new team and build those new habits until they become second nature. And the key to that is the habit loop. Seems like a practical approach. I think I'll take some time to reflect on some cues I can adjust. Wish me luck and patience. Oh, and if you don't mind, I think I'll go on mute while I do that. <laughs>